Imagine this, how would you feel, right, if in the middle of an emotional outburst, let's say you, you're feeling tipped over the edge by hormonal rage and, and you can't stop yourself, and I took you by the hand and calmly asked you to think logically and calm down. Chances are I'd have to duck out of the way of your fist coming in my direction and I wouldn't blame you either really because I don't know if you've ever had someone do that to you but trying to talk ourselves round to calm down, to think logically, it just does not work and yet I think that's what a lot of us as women try to do to ourselves. We try to talk ourselves round, we we try to think a way out of those situations, out of those emotional, really strong outbursts. And and the fact is that we end up either feeling more frustrated with ourselves in the whole situation and maybe other people, and then we're seething in silence because we're just trying to get over it or keep the peace or, you know, just trying to resolve the situation as quickly as we can because it feels shit in that moment. And what that's doing is dismissing the whole problem itself. What I mean by that is putting it down and explaining it away by hormones or menopause or PMT or whatever. It's actually the feelings of anger, of, of frustration were already there. It's just that the hormonal changes that we are experiencing heighten those very true, very raw very real feelings for us so that they still need to be listened to. It's usually pointing back at a problem that hasn't been addressed in some way. So it's better to address those issues. Maybe it's something about boundaries. Maybe it's something about feeling unsupported in some way. There's an unmet need somewhere. And and when the rage has passed, we're able to look at that more clearly. But it does need to be understood and looked at and not just dismissed as being it's a hormonal thing. I do encourage this in all of my clients and in fact I had a a really nice message from a previous client a couple of days ago who just wanted to message me and say um, how much better she's doing these days and and one thing that she pointed out and said that she's learned and got better at and she said herself which is huge she said it's huge for me is kindness and self-compassion towards herself and this is key because I think so often we mix this up with smoothing over the cracks or trying to smooth over the smooth over the the bumps in the road as it were but kindness and compassion is, is not trying to smooth things over it's listening to yourself it's listening to that quiet voice sometimes that needs to be heard and sometimes it gets louder and louder if we don't if we don't do something about it if we don't listen to it it's it becomes so overwhelming it it will feed into that hormonal type of rage feeling it can take quite a bit of courage though to actually admit that something needs to change and then even more courage to actually act on that and full respect to anybody who goes there. We sometimes call this life laundry, uh, a cleaning up um, of the build up of all the crap in our lives, the things that we've collected along the way through through decades of normal life and and feelings and experiences from from years past that that linger in your heart and in your head and it creates beliefs and values and and things that we believe to be true about ourselves and sometimes it can color not only the past but also also color the the potential for our future and and how we experience things now and doing the life laundry is a bit of a clean-up process of of the patterns of thought of patterns of behavior and and self-talk that were maybe useful at one time but maybe less so now and you know lowered tolerance and rage is it's definitely associated with menopause isn't it and perimenopause in particular and pmt the times when the hormonal fluctuations are at their wildest and when you think about it it, it kind of makes sense that we we are set up for this to happen in a way because as well as the the changes in the hormones affecting our moods 
there's the knock-on effects of, of what those things mean and what can happen. So I'm thinking really of one of the most common issues that um, I help women with is, is sleep problems and the tiredness that comes from that. So changes in our sleep patterns, disrupted sleep, insomnia in different ways, and then trying to get through the day after that on a, on a very tired and brain foggy head. And we end up reaching for, for caffeine and sugar and carbs just to try and get through the day. The very things which again feed into this wild up and down blood sugar balance, which is so dysregulated from eating and drinking those kind of things. But we're trying to just get through the day and do our best, I know. But it does mean that because things are going up and down with blood sugar regulation, then we're more likely to feel that in our moods as well. And that's going to be dysregulated. So I definitely feel that there needs to be some some key things that we put into place to not just acknowledge the hormonal uh, changes, to not, not just acknowledge those emotional outbursts, but look at why taking a back step, why are they happening and what can we do to, to alleviate that a little bit? So uh, strategies to help with sleep have definitely got to be in that jigsaw puzzle. They've, they're major pieces in, in putting that jigsaw puzzle together. And if you're not sure how to solve that for yourself, then ask me in the comments below and I'll be able to help you with that. And then there's the changes to digestive health alongside the changes to hormones. Um, not many people realize that those things are actually linked. So changes to our hormones means that the microbiome in our gut, the, the, the friendly bacteria that is trying to do its best to keep us healthy all the time is actually affected and changed through menopause. So if we are um, not acknowledging that then and not doing things to manage that and to support that change, because there's lots that we can do, then we're more likely to feel uh, more prone to lower moods or more emotional outbursts. And there's there's obviously, there's tons, I don't need to say really, there's tons of evidence-based research to show the, the many links between uh, mood regulation and gut health. And we can't talk about hormonal changes without talking about changes in neurotransmitters and happy hormones because some of those neurotransmitters like serotonin have kind of got a, a foot in both camps. They're a hormone, they're also a, a brain chemical and they're about feeling good and, and encouraging that within us. And there are changes to how serotonin is produced and how much we have available alongside changes in estrogen. And there's quite a, a good link um, for supporting that through making sure that you're getting enough vitamin D. So that's definitely something to think about. And that makes me think of all the different herbs and tinctures and, and remedies and things that come up in conversation when we start talking about rage and emotions and probably any menopause symptom, to be honest. And, and this particular subject, emotions and rage and PMT um, and heightened PMT came up in um, the Menopause Done Naturally community recently. And there was lots of comments from various ladies who were recommending different things. And um, I agreed with a lot of them. There were some really good suggestions there. But for me, although they're useful, I wouldn't rely on them completely. And it's certainly not my first choice in starting to look at what can I take. It, it would really be as a, as a supportive strategy around the main question that really needs answering, which is what is at the root? What is at the root of that anger, of that rage, of that frustration? What is really trying to come through as a message? Because it's never just about the hormones. It's never just about an irrational outburst. There's always something else going on. And I would look very kindly and compassionately as, as I've mentioned earlier about how you could do that and go in gently but not not at that height of the emotion waiting for waiting for that to pass 
I would I would go out for a walk, I would move my body, I would change my environment immediately when I'm in that that absolute rage, when I feel stuck in that emotion. There is no there's no talking me out of it, there's no herb, there's no supplement, there's no meditation strategy that's gonna solve it in that move in that moment. I need to move and I would recommend anybody do the same and then coming back to it when things feel calmer to really start to do some deeper self-inquiry, which takes some courage and some time and some kindness to really look at what the message really is there about, about that anger, about that emotion, what's really needed.